We are now joined by Sabine Ferrayen, MEP with the EPP Group from Germany, EIF Steering Committee member and chair of the CALT Committee. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Maria Rosa, for giving me the floor. And thank you very much, uh, the Honorable Commissioner, dear Maria, uh, that you uh, join uh, us today in, uh, with the discussion that you uh, gave us a, a really very structured and uh, very good uh, oversight of uh, the plans uh, of the Commission. And I was very, very happy to hear from the, you that it's not just STEM, but STEAM that we have to push forward when it comes to education as a cult committee chair. Uh, it's clear that I that I love to hear the STEAM uh, uh, approach and not the STEM approach because innovation has also to do with creativity, with arts uh, sometimes too. And as we have it with the new European Bauhaus uh, initiative, which should bring innovation to the building sector, but not just to the building sector, but to the whole approach, how we uh, um, will live in future to combine in a horizontal approach uh, the artistic elements, the, the cultural elements, societal elements with new technologies and uh, 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 city planning and, and, and uh, building houses. I think that's the way how we can foster innovation in future. But to do this in an adequate way, and I think you already mentioned that, is that we need also changes in the way how we educate uh, people. Uh, I think the education systems in, in the member states are still quite linear in the way of thinking and linear in the way how they uh, approach uh, the education uh, in this uh, different uh, issues. But um, what we need more is also to have uh, also in the education systems more holistic approaches, uh, more combining of disciplines, um, more uh, also entrepreneurship ideas when it comes uh, also to higher education and not just in higher education, but also when it comes to uh, vocational training and innovation is sometimes also driven by, practi uh, 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 by practical work. Um, and uh, how do you uh, um, support from European side the, uh, uh, the, the connection between, for example, universities and uh, handcraft people, uh, people who are working in, as, as practitioners in, in, uh, in, in, in jobs, uh, not with higher education, but in, in a more basic or vocational education, because I think that's also very important uh, to, to use the chances of innovation also on this level. Mo many, many jobs in future will be more digital. Uh, there are new ideas and uh, uh, how perhaps to develop uh, technologies in combining those who are working in practice with the um, with, with with new uh, technologies and those who are uh, developing new technologies, uh, is there also a kind of program of bringing together uh, the practitioners uh, with the uh, researchers and uh, innovators also on this level? And how can uh, the education system play a role? And how can the uh, uh, arts uh, and, and culture part, the creative and cultural sector play a role in uh, bringing new, sometimes perhaps uh, uh, not stupid, but uh, crazy ideas uh, to foster in an innovation process, uh, thinking about things um, a researcher or a practitioner never would think about that it can be combined. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Sabine, for your question. Uh, well, I must uh, I must say that I, I fully believe that the education system has here a, a, a crucial role to play. And when we talk about education and new European Bauhaus, I think that we, we first should continue to be inspired by some of our first awards. Remember, one of the 10 categories, it was the role of education in the new European Bauhaus. By the way, that, that was a group of students that's uh, completely uh, by hazard I met before, they are proposing a project, Klima Class, and that's extremely inspirational. So we need more projects like this one. That's why I very much hope that with the new European Bauhaus, there will be a new push for more innovation and this with creativity and cultural sector, because they have this facility to bring new people, fresh ideas, not always with the same usual suspects. And that's what we would like. We would like 
to do. And I very much like now the idea that we have about the annual, uh, the annual festival with the three F on one side forum, because we need to continue to discuss. We need to have a fair in order to, to, to showcase different technologies, already good practices. And of course, to have a fest in order to show our extraordinary cultural and creative diversity and richness. One single single concrete example, uh, I fully believe that we need to continue to promote this cloud work between practitioners and education system. But we know what are our competencies and what are the competencies of the member states. That, uh, that's why, again, I think that we should continue to lead by example. And we already have a very successful instrument, that's the Digital Opportunity Traineeship. We started this program in 2018. Uh, until now, the, the, there is 12,000 students and what we, that use this program. And here, that's a platform where enterprises are in direct contact with, with students. What we change now, and I think that it's a good news, that we expand this program to vocational education and training. And I think that it will be an excellent opportunity for them. The second element that I would like to raise is how important is the role of teachers. That's why I very much hope that in the first 10 selected projects about our teacher academies, there will be enough engaged people to address this issue. I, I really don't want to see these projects again um, repeating the, the same discussions or forums. I would like really to see them tackling concrete challenges. And this challenge is one of one of the main that we should we, we, we can't avoid. The third element that I would like to raise is that now with the new Erasmus Plus program, we have this idea to establish a European network of center of excellence for vocational education and training. And I must say that there is a lot of ideas how with creativity, with culture, we can use their power in order to push our education system to be more in contact with these people that are on the ground, that know about the problems, but above all, that they know what's about the solution. And I think that we should preserve this, this approach, bottom-up approach, certainly sometimes very frustrating because that's not our respective competencies sometimes to intervene in different fields. But I again, I, I, I believe that if we have enough critical mass of small actions, good examples, and we preserve this ecosystem and bottom-up approach, we have more chances maybe this time to make a difference. Thank you very much uh, for, for, for this approach. And I think uh, to teach the teachers, it's one thing we always say in the cult committee too, uh, I think is a very important task. Even we cannot do that from European side, we are be, uh, depending on, on the activities also in the member states, but to give a push uh, for it, also innovative ideas in education, also when it comes to digitization, I think the COVID-19 crisis showed how necessary it is to go new ways um, uh, and innovative ways also in the education systems and to use also artificial intelligence tools in the education sector uh, to, to help teachers uh, to be more innovative, to have a better exchange. And um, you know that we already talked about a kind of platform uh, with best practice models and content for education, uh, that this would be a wonderful idea for Europe, you know, uh, that uh, I would ever uh, support you in, in, in this, because I think uh, it is really a very important goal of the European Union to have this exchange, not just physical mobility like in the past, but a sustainable exchange also via um, uh, digital tools uh, to have really uh, a development uh, in the education systems to more creativity, to a more holistic approach. Thank you uh, for the work you are doing in this. Thank you, Sabine. Just just to add that on this idea on platform, we are advancing very well because the study was launched. Now we have one, one more month to see what are the main obstacles. But I will continue to put a lot of pressure because for me, EdTech is an 
completely unexploited potential of Europe, and we need really to pay more attention to this sector. And of course, uh, the second thing, it's about the use of artificial intelligence in education system. It's done. The expert group, the high-level expert group is created three months three months ago. What I asked them, because I was there for their, for their first meeting, and I will meet them very soon, it's really to have concrete recommendations. We we know what is our base. Uh, we, know, we know the added value of our European approach. We know that we should avoid bias, discriminations, but we need to find the right balance between how with digital tools, with artificial intelligence, we, we can make education more personalized, more interactive, and bring these people that are not spontaneously in the system more closely to us, and at the same time to preserve the human touch and to, to, to preserve the role of our teachers. Not an easy task, but I think that we should seize the momentum and here I'm making a link with the resilience and recovery facility plans. Our first analysis is showing that our member states for the first time in our history will invest 55 billion euro for digital education. If this time we don't seize our chance to make things differently, to make them better, I think that it will be a loss for all of us and we, we, we all, from my side, together with my team, we are following this very closely, not only to be sure now that this money is here for investment and reforms, but what's about the implementation and the critical mass of common actions that we can transfer and scale to European level in order to, to help all our teachers and students. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sabine, for joining us.